Hello, and welcome to my video. Today, I wanted to go over a few of the most common questions that I get whenever people message me about installing firmware chips on their Nintendo Switch and why they should have them installed. Now, I wanna start off by saying that every chip that we're gonna talk about in this video is mostly one that I've encountered, used, installed, or experienced. Um, and secondly, they all do the same thing at the end of the day. After they're installed, they all can take you straight into what is used and called Hecate or Hecate. Hec Hecate. Um, once the mod chip is installed and the SD card is loaded, they all come here. This is the only thing available to my knowledge uh, once the mod chip is installed. Um, but once it's installed, you come in here, you can create your MMC, do all your fun stuff access tinfoil, game libraries, whatever you wanna do. But I think in this video, we're mostly gonna talk about why you would install one of these, what the benefit is, and what the difference in them is. Um, so let's get it out of the way now by saying, all of these are exactly the same. They all do the same thing. They all taste the same if you were to eat them. Uh, they're just all the same. They don't do anything different. They all give your Nintendo Switch the access to create, modify, and change the firmware version or create a custom firmware, uh, back up your NAN, stuff like that. Now, you order if you order chips that are for specific systems, you will get different variants. For example, this, the first chip we're gonna look at, is called the new RP2040+, Plus. new indicating that there was an older version of this chip uh, before this one. Uh, so this one, as you can see, will fit the V1 or V2 Nintendo Switch. Um, does have a reset and a boot button. Uh, let's see if I can just get some focusing. It does have a reset and a boot button. The boot button is held when you plug it into the PC. Uh, these are one of the first chips I ordered, and I still order these for V1s and V2s just because they're kind of my favorite. Um, and each chip will come with a variation of one of these. Uh, these just happen to come with the V1 and V2 uh, since that's what it's for, the V1 and V2. Um, and as you can see, the only difference is the orientation of the capacitors that are on the CPU and V1, and then this one will say uh, V2. So uh, if you order these core chips is what the name they go by, uh, you will receive this. Uh, you'll receive a core chip in the mail. You put your MMC here, uh, you plug everything in and boom, bada boom. It's one of the easiest to install as well, uh, considering you only have to solder about uh, five, six points, uh, technically four points, uh, one, two, three, four, but one, two, three, four, five, six total. Um, so moving on, uh, these chips are technically, again, all the same thing, just like the core chip, but uh, this one was ordered specifically for a Nintendo Switch OLED. Um, as you can see, it uh, really has no difference. It has a reset and a boot button. Uh, it came with a few uh, ribbon cables as well, so you don't have to use the wires. Uh, these two are called universal chips. Uh, again, they are the same things. They are, these three are all PicoFly technic, uh, technicality chips. They run on the RP2040, uh, which is a, a Raspberry Pi chip. Um, so they all do the same thing uh, as far as like speed and quality wise. Um, this chip was ordered specifically for the Nintendo Switch OLED, so the ribbon cables that come with it are going to be for only Nintendo Switch OLED. Uh, they're not going to have universal cables like uh, these two chips do over here. Uh, same thing with Nintendo Switch Lite. I don't have any on hand, but if you were to order a Nintendo Switch Lite, you um, would only get a chip that would fit into Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, this chip also is my least favorite out of any of them for the uh, OLED because the ribbon cables that come with it are kind of trash. Uh, this one is the OLED one. Um, it solders to both 3.3 volt capacitors. Uh, you've got uh, one anchor point instead of two. Um, and it, it's got this screw hole here. So if it's not lined up properly and you screw the heat sink in, you're just, it's just gonna move out of place. Um, they both plug into relatively the same place on the chip, which is nice, but again, they're both just really annoying. Uh, moving on to our last chip, that is the RP2040 variant. Uh, this one is a universal, so uh, they will come with this uh, ribbon cable for the CPU. It says OLED, but it's actually going to fit the light, the V1, uh, well, I'm sorry, the light, the V2, and the OLED model. 
B1. I do not believe it fits. You would have to have a different ribbon cable, but uh, that is the reason why I order the core. So when I do V1s, um, I don't have to worry about it. Now, the newer models also come with better USB connectors. Uh, these are all braced, whereas the original ones were not, and they were kind of terrible, would break easy. Uh, this is for a V1 or V2 switch. Again, instead of buying the core chip that the uh, MMC would plug into, you would simply solder this to the MMC and plug it right back in uh, where um, the uh, MMC plugs in on the motherboard and it'll do its thing on its own. Um, next, we have the OLED connector, which again, I enjoy this one a lot more than the other one because it has a ground, it has a um, anchor point, you've got your clock uh, trace connector there that's just simply there, there's no screw hole, and it's also only got C and D points where the other one had the B on the ribbon cable, uh, not the chip. So that one is again why it was my least favorite. Um, all OLED variants will come with the Data Zero adapter. Uh, the clear is my favorite over the black variant of it, just because it has four anchor points. And to my, to my knowledge and experience, it's easier to install. Uh, it just seems a little bit more flexible and easier to get into place. Um, and then we have the clear light uh, ribbon cable. This one is the nicest because there's no bending or just special way you have to solder it. It's also see-through. So these points here are gonna make all the difference at the end of the day uh, when you're soldering it versus the black one. The black one is absolutely awful. You have to bend it into place. Um, and now we'll just get a good look at the chip. Um, all of those ribbon cables will fit this chip. It is a PicoFly OLED light and V2 only. Um, if you wanna do a V1, you'd probably have to use wires. But again, just use the core chip if you're gonna do a V1 uh, switch. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the RP2040 chip, uh, just like the other ones run on. So, you know, there's no big difference in that. Um, and now, lastly, we have our unique uh, firmware chip. This chip is called the Instinct NX. Uh, this one does not run on a uh, Pico chip like the other ones. Um, it is rumored to be better quality and have a better lifetime uh, usage in the, in the Nintendo Switch after installed than any of these do. But in all honesty, I don't necessarily believe that because I've installed uh, multiple variants of these chips and I've never had one come back for a dead chip as of yet. Uh, and I think my oldest is maybe a year and a half years old, uh, maybe older, um, I just don't keep track as well. Um, but yeah, the Instinct is, uh, I do like using these chips. It's just the overall price of them normally is a little bit more uh, per chip than you'll find for these, maybe a few dollars even. Um, whereas I think on uh, average, I can find these for around two to five dollars. Uh, on average for these, they are normally like six or seven. Uh, no real variation there. Uh, maybe five, I would say at most, uh, or at least. Um, so yeah, again, there's no real difference in it. It, it, it They say that it uses better uh, quality parts and uh, components on it. It doesn't use the uh, Raspberry Pi chip. But again, at the end of the day when these are installed, they just do the same thing. They get you into Hikate so you can back up everything and uh, run your custom firmware on your Nintendo Switch. Uh, the um, components that come with it as well are the same. This one is the new one where it's uh, braced, easier to use. Um, it comes with the new, FP, uh, the new ribbon cable for the OLED. Uh, the Data O adapter, the clear one, not the black one. And same thing with the light, it is the clear one, not the black one. Now, um, I do buy the universal kits more than anything, just because they're convenient, and also buy the core chips. Um, so I do always have a lot of these ribbon cables left, um, uh, you know, left so that uh, if I ever need them again, if let's say for some reason I get one damaged or I damage it or burn it or something, I can just reuse it. Uh, one from the other install. But once you're done installing the chip and you don't want the uh, pieces, you can just toss them. You'll never use this again. You'll never use, if you didn't install it for a lot, you'll never use it again. I just keep them on hand in case I ever need them. I have hundreds at this point, especially USB adapters. I have like a hundred of these uh, and I'm just literally keeping them just to have them at this point. Again, this was my video on the benefits and differences on the um, on the firmware chips for the Nintendo Switch. 
uh, again, if it's all of them, any firmware. Um, this, these will work on any firmware version for the Nintendo Switch. The only big difference is it has to be supported. So let's say 18.0.0 just came out for the Nintendo Switch. It took about two weeks for the creator of Atmosphere, Hikate, um, all these that needed, all these files that needed updated, Hats Pack. Uh, it took about two weeks for them to get updated. Uh, so it wasn't that big of a deal. 17.0.0 to 01 wasn't a big difference. So uh, they didn't even update anything in between those. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much really more to say besides if you're decide if you're wanting to determine if you want to mod uh, your Nintendo Switch with a firmware chip, um, do it. It there's no real negative or um, you know damaging effect to your Switch that it can cause. Um, there is a different method you can use to install it called the Kamikaze method that I don't agree with just because. Um, it does damage the board, but some people use it and some people have great success with it because uh, they say they don't like using these uh, little data zero adapters. But again, uh, if you're looking for the benefits to modify your Nintendo Switch with a firmware chip, uh, I mean, the benefit is just being able to use homebrew, uh, being able to access uh, shops and uh, cheats, unlike you would, you know, be able to do with Nintendo services. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I hope everyone enjoyed this lasagna and talking about this lasagna because it's the best thing to do. So if you liked the video, if it helped you at all, leave me a like, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or improvements on anything that I had shared in this video, please feel free to just leave them right on below uh, and I'll make sure to read them and, uh, you know, leave a like or comment back to you. So again, thanks for watching and I hope everyone has an amazing time.